called farm. It's not a farm called integrated farming. Why integrated farming? Because we want to achieve a short-term return, mid-term return, and long-term return for the farmers. So we encourage all the farm they use this type of term. So you know, certain plantation, you know, they can harvest within three months. So it can cover with their expenses and all those. Mid-term, which means from six months to a year. Long-term, maybe from two, three, four years. So in a in a general view, uh, we call it integrated farming. <laughs> nowadays is um, lesser as compared to the rancher. So investment in as such, even though the government encourage, but people, I mean the government has understand that if too many ranches have uh, been built, to a certain extent there will be a balloon whereby their investment might not be able to, uh, what they call, they might not anticipate the type of return that they expected. Uh, if the uh, you know, ranchers are moving too fast and then there are scarcity of food for the birds. So, uh, in the recent year, in the past two to three years, a lot of uh, shepherd ranchers failed. So, when we do this sort of thing, this sort of investment, nowadays we have really have to be, what they call, on technology expect we have to look at the food whether is it sufficient food for this are shifted around the, the, the locality if not the birds will fly away to a better place where you can source for more food so we are doing this up a system called captive breeding system whereby the egg of the shifted is being hatched to full full grown is under captive breeding so we feed the bird and uh, until maturity they build the bird nest this one has certain advantage. First of all, all the food are what they call the nutrient for the food is stable, where the birds are able to have regular meals without flying very far away. Secondly, the quality of bird nests are better as compared to wild birds because they are eating everywhere. So also you will lessen the pollution, for example, noise pollution. If your house were to locate just beside a shifted ranger. A lot of people will feel a nuisance about you know, the sound that they emit daily and at night. So a lot of complaints. That's why now the government is discouraging people to, uh, to, to have those type of uh, bird ranch located uh, in the town city, in the city area. And then they are now moving it to the rural area. Thank you, Peter. Uh, as cheap as possible, we only control the humidity and the heat or the temperature of the incubator so that the, the egg is being, can be hatched and the bird, uh, when it's being hatched, the small bird, the baby bird are healthy. If it's healthy, then to adulthood it shouldn't be a problem. Until this stage, quarantine area is still manual. When they reach certain strength, they will be able to find them and push it to the bigger range. Actually, the whole process is about 45 to 60 days. And then it's uh, over already. Now I see my baby. <laughs> <laughs> because this is all tame bird. Usually they stick to your head. That means that they are still not full yet. They are still oh. hungry. And regularly now, because in the in the earlier stage uh, in the whole world there is only uh, two ranches, one in Indonesia, another one in Malaysia. <coughs> this is all my baby. So uh, hopefully one day government will look into that. And, uh, but a lot of people now they are still wondering: Is it workable? If you can see the baby birds from uh, hatching of eggs until it flies, 
be able to eat food outside. Uh -huh. So I don't think it's a problem. In fact, we have bird nests already. So it's just a matter of time that the, this system will be eventually adopted. Just like the kampong chicken and the chicken in the farm. Correct. The same, the same, same concept. Like, the yeah. bird. When the head is round, it's okay. female. When the head is like that, you look at this one, it's, it's flattened. So this is a male. So we can even control the agenda of the rank that are shifted in the rank. Oh. How many male and female? So eventually, you know. No, oh, because of the light. This one later on will be a tourist extraction. Okay, yeah, these are chicken is actually all cooked. But in Chinese tradition, a lot of old uh, elderly, they will know these are chicken and we spray it. So they become a uh, you know, spray. So, after the spraying process, they will start to uh, eat very much and they can go to the size of 10 kg per chicken. So, during festive season, this type of chicken can sell about $80 per kilo. Oh. Under normal, normal uh, scenario, like normal days, this type of chicken can sell about $50 per kilo. Oh. And the meat is fantastic. And we are feeding them primarily on organic, which means on, on grass, on uh, this side of uh, what they call jagong and all those. Uh. This one is reached about 3 to 4 kilo already. 3 to 4 kilo, huh? Yeah. Uh, secret certain uh, what they call oil. Mm -hmm. Garu secret oils, where a lot of uh, company like uh, YSL are using it for to, to, to bring into perfume. And Arab country and Muslims are usually use it uh, for certain religious or for to, to make their house. Uh, you know. This are they emit certain smell. This are oil. This are oil is very expensive. Normal garu trees oil garu oil in the market fetch about eight thousand five US per liter. Sun is already. Male, huh? yeah. Male, you can see the differentiation between male and female is an ear. You oh. see the round ear very big as compared to female. Look at this criteria. Mm -hmm. right. 